I'm just saying. But I wonder how many of you have something that you wanted to change in your life? How many of you had something in you that you said, hey, I want to change this? And then you said, man, I started with something I want to change. Maybe it was something you wanted to start. Maybe you said January 1st, which again was just a month and a half ago. And you started out and you said, man, I am going, this is the year. 2023 is going to be my year. I'm going to change this. This is the year. I, I'm going to weigh less, right? I'm going to save more, right? I'm going to not uh, lose my temper as much, <laughs> right? Maybe you said that this was the year that you were going to change something. And maybe it was something you started. So if you were that person, let me ask you just a simple little question. On February 12th, how's that working out for you? Right? How's that working out for you? I mean, I'm sitting here, we're talking about change and, you know, a lot of things. I think the number one, like, New Year's resolution is I want to get in shape and I want to lose weight. Well, we're a church that believes in you. And so on February 12th, we got a lobby full of stuff <laughs> that is going to help you on your journey. Because when you buy food at church, there are no calories in it. All right, that's a lie. That's a lie. No, I'm just kidding. All right. And so anyway, but I just think, you know, how's that working out for you? Because again, you started with something. If it's going good, awesome. Because you would be the exception to the rule. You would be the exception. In fact, again, I, was, I found a study, and this was a study of 40 million people. I said, it's not going that well. Inc. Magazine wrote about this study and found that the vast majority of us will quit our resolutions by the second Friday in January. Do I get any amens? All right, no, you guys are quiet. Woo, I don't know. <laughs> but I was saying, you know, again, you know, we, still, we still weigh more. We still, uh, are, we still are spending more money. Uh, we're, still, uh, we're still having a hard time. We said we want to study the Bible. That's why it's such a key thing that I felt like I start the, the year out with learning how to study God's Word and how important that is. Because we want to make those changes, and we want to make changes for the better, right, for good, and we want to do those things. And so what I want to do is I just want to talk to those that want to change and those of you that hope to change, those of you are, uh, have tried to change, and you're not even sure if change is possible. And so just simply call this message, when you're sick of being stuck. When you're sick of being stuck. You ever feel that way? You know, you ever feel that way? I'll never forget, and I was uh, borrowing a trailer. In fact, from uh, somebody in our church was borrowing a trailer. And uh, my truck, I am ashamed to admit, don't hold this against me, it's, it's, it's two-wheel drive. And... Um, <laughs> And so I went to go pick up this trailer at these people's house, and the trailer was in a field behind their house, and normally you could just drive out in this field and back up to the trailer, and you're good to go. And I'm by myself, you know, and they're out in the country in the middle of nowhere, and I back my truck up to this trailer. Well, I pull up into this field, and all of a sudden, my truck just goes... Anybody relate? Okay, no, because you have four because you have four wheel drive trucks. All right, and so my truck just like dropped in the middle of this field, and I'm just spinning my tires. I'm like, man, I'm not going anywhere. I'm out there. I'm covered in mud by this time because I'm pushing on. I'm by myself. All right, and nobody's home. And so I'm like, man, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I have no idea. I'm stuck. I'm in the middle of this field. How am I gonna get out of this stupid little mess and stupid Dodge two wheel drive truck? And um. <laughs> Anyway, so, so what ended up happening, it was funny, I called, I called Rick, and I said, Rick, you're not going to believe this, but I'm at so-and-so's house, and I'm in the middle of the field. He goes, you know what, I'm not too far for you, from you. I'll come and help you. So Rick pulls up in his Jeep Gladiator with a toe strap, and he doesn't even have to come out into the mud. He just, like, we get this toe strap, and he's just, like, probably 50 feet away, latches on and pulls me out of the mud, and uh, I ended up not getting the trailer. I'm like, it's not that important. We'll just use my truck. <laughs> But, you know, there's times that we need help. We get stuck in the middle of something, or we feel like we can't change. And we need to, man, we've got to have some help to be able to make those things happen. Because on our own, it doesn't happen on our own. And so, again, so I want to talk to those that are sick of being stuck. In fact, in fact if you want to just look at the person next to you and just simply say that, I'm sick of being stuck. You're like, I'm really not. I'm good. You know, but I'm just saying... And so again, so if you feel like many of us, sometimes you're frustrated and 
And uh, man, sometimes you're even ashamed that you can't change or you made comments or you talk, tried to do some things to do some personal change and man, you're even afraid to admit those things. And so today I just want to speak with you and because you're not alone. You're not alone. No situation is unique. I mean, they're all unique, but you're, they're usually something somebody has gone through before, and there's help for you. So if you feel like so many of us do, you're frustrated, you're exhausted, you're embarrassed, again, you're not alone. So again, like we talked about this the last few weeks of what it is to study God's Word. In fact, the last uh, few weeks we went through the book of Acts, and the book of Acts told an incredible story of a guy that we're going to actually talk about a scripture that he wrote and it's the Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul wrote half of the New Testament. Went through all kinds of different things. And so we're going to talk a little bit about him. He understands what it's like to do, uh, to try to do the right thing, but not to do the right thing. And this is what he says in Romans chapter 7, verse 15. If you have your YouVersion Bible app, you can go there. The notes are there. Or you can look up on your Bible or, you know, however it is you want to read the Word of God. But this is what it says. It says, I don't really understand myself. Anybody been there before? All right. For I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Has that ever happened to you? I want to do the right thing, but I don't. This is the Apostle Paul. Okay, get me, all right? This is the guy. Because I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. And then he says, oh, what a miserable person I am. Have you ever uttered those words? Oh, what a miserable person I am. Pray with me. God, I thank you so much that we can be in this place to study your word. And God, I pray that you would let that sink into our hearts, Lord, that change only happens when we rely and we trust on you. And so, God, as we go through these next few moments, Lord, that, that really we have the power to change, and it's in you, our Lord Jesus. I thank you for that. In Jesus' name, everybody said... Amen. So he said, I don't understand myself. I always do what is wrong. I, I, I want to do what's right, but it doesn't end up being that way. And so I'm sure that there are, we can all relate to that. I know I can. And I know that there's been frustration or you make a decision and you're like, man, you know, I knew that was the wrong decision before I even made it and I made it anyway. You know, I mean, we've all been there. We've all been down that road. And you're like, what in the world's wrong with me? I tried to change this year. I tried to change it last year. I tried to change it the year before. I did everything they say to do. I set my goals. I made vows. I bought workout clothes. And so I was with a, a guy the other day. They were talking about uh, his wife had a birthday. And was like, well, what would you get her? He goes, I got her workout clothes. I go, wrong gift. Wrong gift, bro. Wrong decision. And she goes, no, actually, I like working out. I go, okay, right decision. <laughs> I could just imagine if I did that. All right, anyhow. You know, I did. I got the daily planner. I made a vision board. I mean, you should see my refrigerator. It has all my goals and everything listed out. And, uh, you know, I made sure all of those things. I always had the right intentions, but unfortunately, like many, but everybody else and like many of us, we have the right intentions, but we always have the wrong strategy. We have the wrong strategy. Uh, you know, it's just like we, we try to do things on our own. And so that's why I want to speak to you, the power of change, how God's Word teaches us to change. And if you paid attention to what we talked about the last several weeks of what it is to study God's Word, to uh, use soap, right? And so, so this week, I want to build a foundation. And then next week, I want to build on that foundation. And then we're going to look how Scripture talks about habits and even how science confirms it. Because God is the one who created science, so we might as well see how it all works together. And so what do we know about real change? Well, real change is this. Real change is not behavior modification. You're like, well, wait a second. Behavior modification? Yeah, I have to change behaviors if I want to change. Real change is spiritual transformation. When we realize that, hey, we can't do it on our own, there has to be a spiritual transformation. There has to be something within us that will bring that change. It's not just changing what we do on the outside. It's allowing God to change us who we are on the inside. It's not just an outward behavior modification, but real change. Real change comes with spiritual transformation. That's understanding who God is and what he wants for us and relying on his strength and relying on him and trusting him, because I think that's where a lot of us have a hard time, right? We want, God, I want to trust you with this, but you know what? I got this. And God's like, okay, 
Have fun. Let me know how it works out for you. Because a lot of times it doesn't work out for us. We end up in the wrong way. That's why Paul said this in Romans 7. He goes, I'm trying to do what's right, but I can't. I don't want to do what's wrong, but I do. Then he asks this. He goes, who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? I love what he says. He says, thank God. Did you notice the explanation point? He says, thank God. The answer is in Jesus Christ. Who? Our Lord. The answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so it's not a behavior modification. It's a spiritual transformation. So here's what we want to do over the next few weeks. Just show you how we as Christians often try to, often try to change the wrong way. In fact, I want to give you an illustration. It's actually from a guy, Jerry Bridges. And, and uh, just you know, give him credit because there's, these are three big ideas that we want to cover And so he shows essentially that there's uh, uh, three different strategies or three different mindsets that Christians will adopt. And of the three, two of them are wrong. And as we look at this and we look at what God does in us, we always seem to go with a certain mindset. And so today I just want to help you maybe reshape a little bit of your mindset and think about what it is that actually brings real change. And so the first one is the first wrong mindset And many people believe when it comes to change that it's going to be God, then me. God, then me. And so it's God, then it's up to me. So in other words, God initiates this by drawing us, by bringing us into himself. His Holy Spirit rules us in. His grace changes us. We're saved by grace. We're heaven bound. But God does the work to bring us to his family. And then God says, well, good luck. Now it's up to you. All right? We put trust in God. God, you're there for us. And then we're like, okay, we think, well, God, then it's me. So, God, you brought me to this point. Now it's up to me. You can see how that's the wrong mindset? Right? You can see how that's the wrong thing. And so here's what a lot of Christians will say. They'll just say, hey, I'm trying to stop losing my temper with my kids. <laughs> or I'm trying to stop cussing, darn it. <laughs> you know? And then they use the other word. All right? And so Tamara's like going, oh, man, you, you really did it this time. But again, I, I'm trying to get close to God, or I'm trying to stop spending uh, four hours a day scrolling on TikTok, or the gram, right? Or Snapchat, whatever it is. I got it right that time. All right, you guys are with me. <laughs> and we're like, God, save me, but we believe it's going to be up to me. It's the wrong mindset. The first one is God, then me. The second one that's wrong is what? It's God, not me. It's God, not me. And so anyway, so while the first one is about our effort, the second one almost absolves us from any effort or responsibility. Right? We think it's up to God to do it all for us. We think it's all up to Him. And so again, so there are some Christians who have this mindset. It's God, not me. It shifts all the responsibility to God. He has to do everything, and I don't do anything. You can see how that's a wrong mindset, right? I hope you're with me. Are you tracking with me? You guys got quiet real quick. Pastor, you're confusing me. I know I'm confused as well as I'm going through this. But the truth is, for example, if it's God, not me, then I don't like my job. I might as well say, well, I'm going to quit my job for the glory of God. And he's going to provide and bring me a new one. (laughs) Maybe not the best strategy. Because then we shift that responsibility. And so, you know, I want to get closer to God, but I really haven't read his word in the last 10 years. And I know we just did a thing on soap, and I'm still having a hard time opening his Bible, but I want to get close to him. And so it's kind of up to him, right, to bring me close to him. No, we have to take the moment and read and look at what God's doing. So if we try to put all the responsibility on God and we take ourselves out of it, that's not right either. And so you're wondering why I'm not close to God. And so I think about, again, you know, again, the three mindsets, the first two are wrong and dangerous. There's God, there's God, then me, there's God, not me, but here's the actual correct one. It's God through me, God through me, right? When we look at it, God, do it through me. Let me trust in you. Do it through me. Let me rely on you. The correct is actually God through me. In fact, say that with me. Say God through me. And say that with me, God through me. So how do we really change? It's not a behavior modification. It's a spiritual transformation. It's God working through me. So here's how the, Paul, uh, the Apostle Paul recognized this. He says, I'm trying to change, but I can't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do. Who in the world can save me? And his response, 
was Jesus. Jesus is the only one who can. So here's the process. This is what Paul is saying. And again, we talked a lot about him in the last several weeks in the book of Acts. Well, here's actually the first Corinthians. This is the book that he wrote. He says, for I am the least of the apostles. He goes, I do not even deserve to be called an apostle. Right? He's looking at himself. He goes, I don't even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. You see the mind process? He's like, well, guys, man, I was, what a miserable person am I, right? That's what he says. And he goes, man, I am the least of the apostles. This is the guy that wrote half the New Testament. This is the guy that planted a bazillion churches. Bazillion's a real word, look it up. It's not. I'm just kidding. All right. But he planted all these churches, and he did all these missionary journeys, and he did all of these things, and he saw incredible life transformation. And he says, I am the least of the apostles. He goes, but it's only by God's grace. God's grace through me. It was God through me. It's what he is doing. He's all those things. He goes, man, it's not by my talent. It's not by my education. It's not by my good works. It's not by my effort. It's by what? By what? What is it? The grace of God. It's by his grace. See, you need to understand this. The same grace that saves you is the same grace that changes you. Right? The same grace that saves you is the same grace that changes you, the same grace that changes you. But by the grace of God, it's not without no effect. Because man, I'm not very good. I don't deserve this, but his grace has impacted me. And I am what I am because of his grace. And it did a work on me. Because he even made that comment. He says, man, I work harder than any of you. I work harder than all of them. He got up earlier. He stayed up later. He was in the film room. All of those things. He uh, was staying after a practice. He was getting there before anybody else showed up. He said, man, I've worked harder than all of you. Man, and this is the guy when he, he preached the gospel more ferociously and fearlessly. He was beaten and beaten again. He was left for dead. He was whipped. He was snake bitten. Ready? Shake it off. I won't go there. All right. He was shipwrecked. He came back. He was persecuted. They tried to kill him, and he came back. And he says, yet not I, but it was the grace of God within me. You see, his grace was not out of effect. It was that same grace that saved him. It was the same grace that changed him. And the same is true for us. It's that God's grace. See, real change is not God, then you. Real change is not God. Uh, is not God, not you. Real spiritual change is God through you. It's not behavior modification. It's spiritual transformation. It's letting God do the work when, uh, in us. And so what does it look like on Monday when I bought all the desserts at church and I want to just eat every single one of them, <laughs> Right? Or what is it when, uh, uh, again, or when I want to yell at my boss and take him hostage and ask for ransom money? You've never been there. I, I know. Okay, straighten up your halos. All right. <laughs> I've talked with some of you. I know how you feel. All right, anyhow. But again, it's just like, again, God's going to get me out of this, right? If real change is God through you, what does it look like? And I want you to understand that this is really important. And please, this is really, if you have a chance, write it down or take notes in your version app. You know, pay close attention because here's the secret. I don't want you to miss this. For a spiritual change, for change to be a spiritual transformation, it has to be spiritual. It has to be spiritual. All right, I'm going to say it again. For change to be spiritual transformation, it has to be spiritual. It has to be empowered by God's Spirit and not by your willpower. Not, I mean, I can tell you, man, I've got strong willpower, but put me in front of those donuts out there. You're going to see how long that willpower lasts. And so it's just like, I know you're going to go out there and you're going to look at those donuts. And you're like, okay, man, here's the donuts. I'm good. This is willpower. Get behind me, Satan, and don't push, <laughs> you know? And so anyhow, 
That's an old little rascal's joke. None of you got that. All right, okay. <laughs> but you understand the new year is going to roll around again next year. You're going to say, I want to change this. And you're going to have your why. Because I'm tired of wearing my big jeans. I want to wear my skinny jeans. You don't want to see this in skinny jeans. I'm just saying. But the truth is, is like, and you're going to have a plan, and it's whatever diet works for your friends, the exercise, all of those things. Last year was CrossFit. I love this year. I would love to go play this. I haven't had a chance, but this year maybe it's pickleball. All right? And so, you know, whatever it is, you get all of these things. And so, again, what I want to suggest to you, though, add a spiritual why. Why do you want to do that? Why do you want to make that happen? Why do you want to do those things? Your spiritual uh, how is God's power through you. It's not your effort. It's not behavior modification. It's spiritual transformation. And so if your goal is to get in shape and to do something, you know, what's the spiritual why? You're like, well, pastor, how can I make that spiritual? And it's just like, well, why do you want to lose weight? Well, I want to feel better about myself. Why do you want to get in shape? Because I want to be able to climb a, a, you know, a flight of stairs without getting tired. Really? Well, let's, what about this? You know, man, my body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And I want to take care of God's temple. And I want to be able to have a long lasting life so that I can do more good for God and I can reach more people through my health and I can be excited about those things. I never, I heard an incredible message by a pastor in the area. And he just talked about, he said, he talked about the temple of God, And he talked about that his body was a temple and he talked about years of abuse and years of all those things before he came to salvation, that he was addicted to drugs and he was addicted to all of these things and it really destroyed his body. And he was uh, preaching that he pastors a very large church and, and he got really sick and he was laying in the hospital room and he felt like the Holy Spirit just spoke to him and just said, you know, man, those years of not taking care of your body really has taken a toll now. And so we talk about health. What's your spiritual why? Because I want to take care of what God's given me. I want to take care of this body. That's your spiritual why. And so I want to love God. I want to be more engaged with people. I, I, I want to spend more time with them. So if we're staring at our screen at TikTok four hours a day, you add that up over the weeks. If you know, I'm not a math person, I'm not going to do that for you. Brent, you might have to do that for me. But the truth is, is like maybe we're spending all this time on social media and you're like, man, I'm really trying to get away from social media. I'm trying to maybe stay off my phone. Uh, I'm on it more than I should be. And so just because, well, so I can have time to do other things or so I can do this. Well, maybe your spiritual why is maybe I need to get more engaged with the word of God. Maybe I want to want, let God transform me. I want to spend more time in his word and let that power, that, that transform me of who he is and spend more time learning about him than maybe four hours a day on TikTok. By the way, TikTok is one of the biggest time wasters there is. And some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Because we can get so distracted and we can get all these things coming at us and we want to make all these changes and we let all these distractions come in. And this, let me just tell you that the devil wants to destroy your life. And he'll throw things in your path. And we talked about this in our men's group yesterday. And sometimes it gets a little crafty. He changes the strategy up a little bit. You're like, wow, I'm good at resisting here. And man, I'm doing good here. And God's really helping me here. Well, what about over here? Oh, that's a whole nother ball ballgame. I'm not so good over here. I got to get better about those things. Because again, I, I, I want to make the right decisions. Understanding your finances. Everything I have comes from God. And one of the best ways I could worship and honor him is by stewarding wisely and managing his resources to a point where I'm not just trying to pay my bills, but I can be a blessing to the people around me. Spiritualize your why. Make it a spiritual thing. I want to be in better shape so I can, you know, again, all of those things. This is what Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6 says. It says it's not by might, right? It's not by willpower, he says, it's not by might, it's not by willpower, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord God Almighty. It's not on my own, it's not on my abilities, it's by the Spirit of God, it's through what He does in me. So when God's Spirit is working through you, He said, it's not me, but it's God's, it's His grace through me. And you're not on your own, you have a stronger power. You have that stronger power, and so... Again, I just, I just think about this, you know, it's in so many ways, this is what happens when you don't bring your power, uh, but a stronger power. It's not by mind, it's by power. I thought about, you know, again, you know, I think about being stuck in the mud. I couldn't get out of there on my own. I had to have some help. 
And so when we go through situations in our lives and we go through spiritual things or behavioral things, it's like, God, I got to have you. You got to throw me that rope. It's by your spirit that you're going to be able to pull me out of this. I'm tired of being stuck in this situation. And so when you think about change, it becomes spiritual. And so what do you want to change? You had your goal, but now it's gone, right? You set your resolution and now we're in February and that's been long gone. You're still paying for that gym membership and you haven't been to the gym and Six weeks. <laughs> you know, again, what is it? You got to overcome. Maybe it's an addiction. Maybe you want to get over. You can't do it on your own. You have to trust the one who gave it all for you. It has to be a spiritual thing. And so maybe you want to pray regularly with your spouse. What do you do? I mean, you got to take those moments and make them happen. It's a spiritual why. You know, God is a God of order, therefore I want to organize my life. Tamara's looking at me, you need to let God organize your life. <laughs> but again, it's a spiritual thing. And so here's what I want to do over the next couple of weeks. And here's your first assignment. And, and we're going to build on this in the weeks to come. Define your spiritual why. Define it. When you want to think, think change in your life and you're like, man, we've got the power to change. What is it? Why do you want to change it? And what's your spiritual why? Define it. Realize, man, there is the reason why. And it's not just because, well, I want to look good in my jar or I want to be better with my money. It's like, no, God, I want a spiritual why. Because when you spiritualize it, it'll happen. And I think about this statement. And I heard this. And this might be even something you can write down says, I am disciplined. Christ in me is stronger than the wrong desires in me. Maybe you wake up every morning and that's your prayer. Maybe that's what it is. It's an affirmation. It's just saying, you know what, today, today when I get up, I'm going to say, I'm disciplined. Christ in me is stronger than the wrong desires in me. Because that's a true statement. When we lay it at his feet and we spiritualize it, then we're able to do those things. Guys, please understand, this is not just a self-help sermon. This is trusting in God to make the changes in your life to empower you to change through his Holy Spirit. And when you're going through difficult situations, we need to learn to lean on one another and to help each other go through those times and, and realize that, you know what, there's some things I can't do on my own. I have to get somebody to walk beside me. I have to get somebody to help me throw that rope and that we can trust God together. i got to have people praying for me going through a difficult situation. Man, there's times that God will lay people on my heart, and I really try to in those moments just to text somebody and just say, hey, I just want you to know, God, just put you on my heart, and I'm praying for you today. And so sometimes we go through difficult things, and how cool would it be to have, know that hey, you have somebody that cares and is praying for you, that somebody in your life is calling your name before the throne of God. That's where we get our strength from. I'm disciplined. Christ in me is stronger than the wrong in me. And so again, I think about myself. By nature, I'm not disciplined. <laughs> you know, I, I struggle and all of those things. And I, I went through a major weight loss several years ago. And sometimes I put it back on and sometimes I take it off, I put it back on. I'm not near what I was. And you can imagine what that was like. <laughs> wow, pastor, you were really, yeah, I was. But I finally came to a point and realized this has to be because I want to be able to do things that will glorify God. I want to be able to be in there for the long haul. I want to be there for my family. I, I don't want uh, my family to have to come see dad in the hospital room because he didn't take care of his body. I want to be there because God's called me to, to preach his word and, and to make a difference in the lives around. And, and uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to do that uh, from a seated position. I want to do that from standing and being able to be in there for the long haul. I gotta learn how to outrun the fork. I haven't figured that out yet. So if you have, let me know what that looks like. <laughs> it's very fast. <laughs> His power comes in you, it prompts you, it reminds you that you can walk away. No matter where you're tempted, our God will always give you a way out. You're not on your own. You've got your why, and now you've got your spiritual how. And so what do we know as our team comes up, as we get ready to close this time today? Real change is not God, then you. Real change isn't God, not you. Paul said, I am the least, but his grace was at work, and I did everything I could, and it was his grace through me. Real change is always God through you. It's not behavior modification. It's spiritual transformation. It's a change of heart. 
Please don't miss this. It's a change of heart if you only change your behavior. And again, this is what a lot of people do. If you change your behavior but don't change your heart, I guarantee you the behavior will come back. Guaranteed. So if you're sick of being stuck, I got good news for you. There's power outside of you that will help you change. And it's trusting in him. It's a spiritual problem. It's always a spiritual problem. And we have to have that spiritual transformation. And so being, because again, we're trying to figure out, God, man, I'm going to trust in you. I, I need your help through this. And that's where those, this change is going to happen. And so you're trying to meet a real need in your life or relieve a hurt with something besides God's grace. That's when we get off track and that's when we miss the mark. But it's through Christ in us that that difference is made. And Apostle Paul, he said, that same grace that saves you is that same grace that changes me. So God says, my power works best in weakness. And Paul said, I, I'm all the more glad to boast about my weakness because he said, in my weakness, I am made strong through Christ. That's where our hope comes from. See, because Jesus didn't come to make us better. He came to rescue and save us, to change us and to free us. That's who he is and who the Son has set free. Say it with me. It's free indeed. It's free indeed. So maybe this is a struggle. I don't know who this is for this morning. I don't know. I, I was wrestling with this message all last night, and it's like, God, I don't know who this is for, but I feel like this is for somebody in this room. And maybe it's time for you to realize I'm tired of doing it on my own. I'm tired of being stuck. And it's time for real transformation. As you keep praying today, and nobody looking around, maybe there's our, our, those of you in the room as we talk about spiritual change and spiritual transformation. Well, maybe you're in this place today, and you're here for a reason, and you're watching for a reason. Maybe there's something speaking to your heart right now, and can I tell you that that is the Holy Spirit saying you need to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. You need to give your life to the one who gave it all for you, because the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. When we talk about change and transformational change and spiritual change, and the truth is, is maybe you're here and you don't really know what spiritual transformation is like because you don't know who Jesus is or you don't know what it's like to have him, that when you surrender your life to him and you give everything to him. And so today is your moment. Today is your day say, you know what, I want the change, but I, it's got to be a God change. I'm tired of doing it on my own. And today I want to invite say, the Savior of the world to come into my life, to change me, to transform me. So that I can all of a sudden make real change through Jesus Christ in me. If that's you today, and you would say, Pastor, I've never given my heart to Jesus, but today I feel that something's speaking to my heart. Today's the day that I need to give my life to Him. If that's you, and you would say, I want to give my heart to Jesus, would you just raise your hand right now? you respond in the chat you know what Jesus died publicly on a cross and it's no problem to confess him publicly and to say man I'm going to be up front and raise my hand and just say hey I'm giving my heart to you would you just simply pray with me church Heavenly Father thank you for sending your son to die for me today I give you my life no longer to live for myself but to live for you Thank you for saving me. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for giving your life. In Jesus' name, amen. But thanks again for being at Grace Point Church because at Grace Point Church, we want you to experience a place that you belong. Why? Because we are so much better together.